All right, the casting marathon continues. Hey everyone, this is Luminous and Nebula coming guys with a pro Dota commentary. We're moving to Dota 2 now, and we're actually gonna do a game from the ESWC. This is gonna be Ehome versus M5, and Nebula, if you would do so, I'm pausing. Three, two, one, go. Ah, hold on, hold on. My mouse is it's okay. not showing up. All right, ready? Go ahead, go now. <laughs> I'm a 16. Can you drag back? No, you can't. Now my mouse doesn't show up either. All right, sweet. All right, now just leave it on the thing and then press it. Ready? I, I can't even find my mouse. One sec. You'll, you gotta right, get 16. Over the... 16. 3, yeah. 2, 1, go. Hey, it's still up too. It's lovely. We're good. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, yeah. so there's a couple bugs in the game. Be fair. A couple? Just, just like two? Apparently, one of the bugs is if you're paused, your mouse cursor disappears. Um, I don't know what the heck causes that. Anyway, so we got M5 versus E Home. I am excited. I like uh, European versus Chinese games. Not because I'm like, oh, Europe, go Europe, or oh, China, go China. Um, uh, I'm like somebody. <coughs> but uh, mainly because it's just games we don't get to see. We don't get to see the two scenes clashing very often. Um, it's just not, you know, we decidedly have a dichotomous Dota scene. We have, you know, the, the European and North American scene and then the Chinese scene, and they don't really intermingle a whole bunch. Or Ch by Chinese, I mean Asian, of course. And I really dislike it because it's just, it's not because people don't enjoy playing with each other, it's just the technology level, it's not up there. And hopefully Dota 2 is going to solve most of that, so. Oh, yeah, Dota, Battle.net, the original Battle.net is such an archaic and awful system, and like, even everything they use to, like, emulate for LAN on Dota, it's just so, so inferior to just, like, any new engine you would build, so. Um, definitely, I mean, there's plenty of games like Counter-Strike and stuff like that that are played around the world um, that have very much instantaneous reflexes mattering and hitboxes and registers and stuff, so uh, there's no reason that Dota cannot be the same. And It's pretty good. I play on the uh, European server on Dota 2 all the time, and I never feel like I'm at a disadvantage, whereas, you know, if I do that now, it's very, on Dota 1, it's very frustrating. I'm sorry, I'm just having a really a fun time clicking on all these buttons on the top. They're going to... We'll be using these, uh, these like go and experience boxes. Oh, isn't it awesome? I know, man. I'm gonna have you fun. You don't do any math for yeah, me, not, for a non-Chinese guy. It's amazing. I click on it, and the game just tells me exactly what I want to know. Hey, for a Chinese guy, I do it in my head and I check the result, man. That's how we roll, bro. I check all right. The result. Uh, all know. right. <laughs> Let's go into the picks and bans here. Obviously, in the CM mode for Dota 2, it's a little bit different. There's only four bans instead of five because. And how does it actually work? You you get the two bans right in the beginning, and then you pick three, and then. And then two more, and then the last two? Is that how it is? Yeah, it's, it's the exact same as, as Dota 1, except the first stage is not three, it's just two. Okay. So instead of 1-1, one, one, you know, alternating through three, it just alternates through two. So there's only two less picks, it's obviously just two less bans. But it is important because uh, being only able to ban two heroes really limits your ability to remove a whole set. Like, you know, in Dota 1, you can remove a whole set of something. You can remove Chin, Furion, and Enchantress and be like, all right, you're not pushing with summons, that kind of thing. In Dota 2, you can't really do that. You have to kind of concede that they're going to get a really powerful hero, whether that's Anti-Mage or hey. Lich or Furion, as we see Anti-Mage. Like, yeah, you can ban Furion and Weaver, but that means they're going to get Anti-Mage. It's just how it works. Um, now, in Dota 2 as well, the metagame meta is much different because there's just not as many solutions. Anti-Mage is so much harder to solve in Dota 2 than he is in Dota 1. Uh, you can't you can't do an undying strategy or something and just totally ignore him, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that stuff just doesn't work. I think uh, currently in the pool right now, there's like one counter to Anti-Mage maybe, and that's the Night Stalker. Night Stalker, yeah. I'm surprised that he isn't banned because Night Stalker is a popular hero right now. There's not many other ways to deal with the Anti-Mage because most of the pool is intelligent. Intelligence based yeah. hero and and whatever you know, so basically basically here's the deal. Like if they ban, if they go ahead and ban um, um, Night Stalker over the Lich, then the Dire can then ban, uh, um, or they can ban a uh, uh, AM rather they ban AM and then you might yeah you might get a Lich but then they're still gonna have an S and I, I think that's a worse trade. But actually as it stands, um, they're gonna skip the that altogether. They're going to go we got and grab Beastmaster and Windrunner, which is, I don't like that. I think NS is really, really strong in Dota 2. And with the opposing team having an AM, I think you want to do that. But, yeah, there's also not an Eridar, obviously, in Dota 2 to kind of keep the Anti-Mage at bay either. Well, if you want to look at it one way, you can kind of ignore, I mean, NS against Anti-Mage, he is going to be good about for 
35 minutes in, 30 minutes in. But at, past that point, if he does pick up the Manta style, and that there goes your entire counter. Whereas right. Beastmaster is going to be good throughout the whole game, ever, you know, whenever he picks up his level 6. Um, that 4 second stun at level 16 can't be ignored, uh, anti-mage or not, because if you're disabled for 4 seconds, they can kill you. Of course, yeah. Shackle Shot, not too bad in terms of crowd control as well. Uh, just pretty good heroes. I feel like what Scourge is doing right now is picking heroes that won't die to anti mage. Windrunner is being one. You could turn on the Windrunner and get out. Beastmaster is a tanky strength hero that doesn't have too much mana to begin with. So you're not going to be. You're mostly, as an anti mage player, you're mostly not going to be going to go for the Beastmaster. So if they continue up this trend, that might not be a, the, a bad way to deal with the anti mage, but even so, he's still a very dangerous hero. Plus, I don't see the Radiant grabbing Night Stalker with anti mage. Uh, you don't see a lot of NS AM combo teams. That's not that's not something that happened. Well, I'm a, okay. Well, all right. So this is egg on and around my face. As uh, E Home says, "Well, Nebula, you're completely wrong because that's what we're gonna do." Um, really interesting to picking up the Night Soccer with the anti mage. How do you feel about that? Give him a lot of tanking, uh, definitely. Um, the anti oh, well, a lot of times when you there's an anti mage on the enemy team, you you try to base your picks around this. Like, okay, how we counter the anti mage? How we counter the anti mage? And now you have the Night Stalker in the picture as well, and suddenly it becomes really hard. Like, now what do you do? You have, you have a hard to kill carry that's gonna do a lot of damage. Now you have another tanky guy that could run and disrupt your team fight. Uh, Potom, Potom usually is not that big of a deal, but suddenly if you can't kill anyone, what do you do? I don't know. I don't think they're gonna try to out tank with Spectre. I guess. I, I guess. I guess the plan is when you, if you can't beat him, join him. Uh, go ahead and grab yourself a Spectre and say, all right, well, we'll play late game too. <laughs> The one thing about NS is he gives you so much disruption through the early phases because, you know, in that first nighttime, he can dive really aggressively. Um, and as that second and third one come, he can be even more aggressive if he had a successful first one. Uh, and even if he didn't, he can probably farm a little bit to, to make that happen. So uh, he plays very much as a ganging tank. Like, um, I'm, try I'm trying to think of a hero that kind of matches that, uh, you know, a tank that gangs a whole bunch. Um, nothing's coming to mind off the top of my head, but... Burning's is Necrolite, it? apparently, ganking past oh, that first yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> he is basically going to play exactly like Burning's Necrolite did in the last daily. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's spot on, actually. That's kind of funny, because that's a lot closer to true than it sounds, because that's actually what he did. He was way past the tower, cutting off waves, just, like, threatening constantly, but it was with a Necrolite. So. Right. That's If you, you haven't watched that game, I really suggest you. It was awesome play. Yes. Really one of the best Dota games. Oh. Well, not best of Dota game, but high skill played by DK. Yeah, definitely one of the best played Dota games that I've yeah. seen in a while. So that was the the last daily, one of the dailies, was uh, DK versus um, Panda. So go check that one out. Yep. So we see a ban on Leviathan as they want to remove team fight. They don't want to have a Leviathan ultimate followed by a Spectre uh, that would just lay down a bunch a bunch of heroes there. Uh, with the same idea, they take down the, the, the Enigma as well. They remove him from the pool. Yep. Meanwhile, M5 goes ahead and bans the Ancient Apparition as... They clearly need a support on the Sentinel side. AA, probably one of the best supports left in the pool right now. Remember, this is a limited pool. Well, oh, come on. There's, pretty... there's still Crystal Maiden, Ventral Yeah, there's still, there's still plenty Doctor. of good ones. But I think Ancient Apparition is better than Crystal Maiden and Witch Doctor. And that allows them, like, they're probably going to have NS in that mid lane um, with Potom up top, I, w I would guess. Uh, but if they put AM on bottom, they could get another Stunner, and Anti Mage would get a bunch of kills on that bottom lane. Yep, I agree. Is that, is that Dazzle or Witch Doctor? I can never tell. That is Dazzle. That okay. is Dazzle. So they go ahead and ban Dazzle. Um, yeah, again, a similar idea. A hero that's going to be very strong supporting that AM in lane. Uh, they just want to remove all the supports. Now, they did give away Witch Doctor here if they want it. Uh, E-Home can take it. Or um, Vengeful Spirit or Crystal Man. I, I, I feel like they, they're going to be fine with either any of the three because um, each one offered them. I say Crystal Maiden might be the best here. For yeah, them. because nice. of NS and Potom, I think yeah. they want Crystal Maiden. I would I would say the same thing, but Witch Doctor is very powerful as well. I wouldn't be I wouldn't fault them for doing that either. Yeah, Witch uh, Doctor, now, really. So of course they're going to take Vengeful Spirit here now. <laughs> We're like we agree on two, and yeah. they're like no no. Uh, e Home taking taking a bit of time. Um, of course, if you haven't been really following the latest Dota scene, um, this is where 820, which is probably one of the best captain in Chinese Dota history. Um, he just left E Home. He in fact I think he left as a player completely. Now he coached for WE, I believe. I yeah, he is the he is the coach for W or for Wee. Yep. Or was it Tai Lu? No, it's Wee. Yeah, W E. Yeah. So E Home is severely weakened in that uh, fact that they lost oh, their captain. Yeah. That, that so. is an irreplaceable player. You just can't. I mean, it literally, it, it would be better for them if X had left. I think. <laughs> oh come on! 
Oh, when does X going to be playing? Does, I think X plays Potom now. Um, if if the uh, unless they pick up a Storm or something, which I don't see them doing here. Yeah, they already have an NS. I don't think they can do that. Yeah. I think he plays. He's going to play Potom here. Um, he plays a fair amount of F, F, F Potom as well. But uh, yeah, so they do go ahead and grab that Witch Doctor as we were talking about. Uh, Crystal Maiden ends up being the pick on the other side for. Um, I don't like that. For M5 here. Now they have, let's see, a Windrunner on bottom, Beastmaster middle. They need a babysit uh, for the Spectre. But the problem is Crystal Maiden just gets completely annihilated. Exactly. Exactly. Um, even, the, even the Witch Doctor, if you can actually handle yeah. the Crystal Maiden quite there's easily. A, there's, there's just so much on their side. Like, she's decent against Potom, not great against Potom, to be honest. And she's awful against Night Stalker and Anti Mage. Night Stalker, in particular, just completely eats her lunch. It's not even close. Um, so. Nope. Not a great choice there, I don't think. Now the last pick here, they could they're gonna put the witch doctor with the with the anti mage, so it's gonna be either a third support, maybe a jungler. They could do a no Furian's band. What am I talking about? Furian's one of the first bands. It could be an enchantress. Uh, it could be that vengeful spirit that's still in the pool. They could do that. It could be a venomancer. All right, there we go. Yep, I like that pick. Venomancer. They can roam the veno really well. They, if anti mage and um, Fanti Mage has a lot of success on that bottom lane. Vino and Witch Doctor can very easily roam around up to the mid lane with that Night Stalker and get a lot of gangs going. Um, so this should be this should be fun. And in fact, they will put Potom top though. I don't think they'll put Vino top. I think they're gonna do Potom top solo. The, the Venom yeah. might actually be paired with the Potom. Uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see on that. They could do that. Witch Doctor's capable of babysitting Anti Mage by himself. But I think that yeah, I guess the winner that might be okay. They might do that because the top lane is gonna be Crystal Maiden, and it looks like Crystal Maiden Lena Spectre Ooh. up top. Which is a pretty potent little lane, so. Yep. Um, I, I just wish that they didn't have such defensive carry, which is the Spectre. I mean, let's say, if, if imagine you have a Slaughter on it instead of the Spectre, then you could go really offensive with that tri lane. But unfortunately, we're going to see a somewhat of a safe tri lane. Uh, my mouse is not working right now. It's because, oh, yeah, I need to turn it to free camera. Oh, man, look at all these things. Thing. Uh, let me see what, uh, let's see, what Ehome X is clicking right now. Oh, yeah, let's do, let's do that awesome. Oh, man, this is crazy. Perspective. Oh, Girl. do you want to do? Do you want to listen to Toby Wan's cast? Let's just let's just put him on and he'll cast. Does it work? Is that how it works? I, can you? you? You could try it. I have my game volume really low, so I can't. I'm stuck on the item screen. Cause I guess someone you're looking is having an item. Yeah. No, everybody is having has items open. Yep. Yeah. That's okay. Are you stuck there too? Yeah, I'm stuck there too. I I, I can't. Okay, I can't. Me. I can't even go back. I, I can't click on the camera. <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to screen and then back. Yo, man, there, there's a team fight going on right now, but but my oh, there's a cast. All right, they're gonna focus down on Dread here. Dread a half H. He drops an LSA, but Anti Mage doing work right now. First blood being picked off. Um, looks like Spectre get the first blood in the first place. Uh oh, and now we have the Venom Master trying to run or trying to run away. Now the B PGG's Beast Master is going to go down as well. And I wish half my screen wasn't blocked off here, as we see Nice Stalker going to go down as well. A two to two exchange so far. This is an intense early game team fight. Now Spectre in trouble, as we see Venomous Gale going to hit, and G Spectre is going to go down three for three right now. Uh, Crystal Maiden being the focus, and and Potom is going to go down. Crystal and then, and then and then anti is going to get the Crystal Maiden. Vigos, the last and the next one here is anti is getting a bunch of damage here from Vigos. A little bit of a dance there by News. It looks like Dread's going to come around and stop this madness as we see a four for four trade at minute 10 seconds. That was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. Okay, was how, how, how did you solve the problem? Because I, I did not solve the problem. I'm stuck. Um, let's press F1. I, I just exiled the replay. That, that solved the problem. Did it fix it, or did you go back? I don't know. I, I press X, and I'm, I'm going to just reload the replay real fast. That's probably what you do. Oh, okay. So let's do, this. let's do the same thing. And let's not switch it to... All right, I'm watching the replay, <laughs> or rather reloading it. <clears throat> AX speed. We're, so leave this off. We'll, we'll just watch the first blood again. You know what? Let's watch that again. You Let's just cast it again, and we don't even know what happened. All right, I am on. All right, are you ready? Speed. Get your epic voice going, Nebula. Hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah, all right, here we go. Let me warm up. Let me warm up. <clears throat> oh, I crikey. All right, I think I'm ready. <laughs> All right, let's have oh, it at a certain time and we'll pause together. Go, go, check, switch to free camera right now. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. And go to Fog of War, both teams. Okay, audio channel, none. All right, let's go. <laughs> All righty, I'm at 350. 
four four minutes. Okay, so I think what they're going to want to do here is pick up um, probably a Night Stalker. I think obviously Night Stalker and Anti Mage, very awesome combo pick. Uh, you see them all the time together. Yeah, yep, definitely. And then you pick up a Potum, so now you can scout with those arrows too. Exactly, scout arrows for the blinks, of course. Yes, because um, you know you can't blink into fog. So uh, I think I think since they're probably want to go to for a five on five battle right at the start, they probably want to go ahead and pick up some kind of Witch Doctor. Uh, as well as a crystal man, like because it's important you have early like in the, in the five on five team battles that tend to happen in the first thirty seconds. You really want to pick up all of those uh, super important. Hey early man, games. AOE Nova for the slow and a three oh, stun. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't get better than that. I mean, at level one Nova against five heroes is totally sick. Yep. All right, I guess pause at minutes. Uh... Eleven thirty five, eleven thirty six, because I was there. Eleven forty, because I didn't pause. No pause. <laughs> eleven forty. Okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna as Nebula's gonna catch up. I'm gonna look at everyone's starting items because that will be. I can't even move my camera. All right. I'm ready. Pause. Ready? Okay. I'm pausing. Three, two, one, go. All right. So uh, for the first time we're seeing this, uh, we have Ahom X playing on the bottom here, and then uh, QQQ on. I think that's three five seven. I believe on the yes. Night Stalker News on the uh, Anti Mage uh, PCT, which I think. That's really familiar. Crystal, I want to say. Yeah, Crystal on the Venom Master, and of course, ARS for Brigus on the uh, yeah. Witch Doctor. Fat Fabergas or whatever. Yep. And PGG yeah. on the Beast Master, G on the Spectre NS on that Crystal Maiden, and uh, Drip playing that uh, Lena. Well, actually, it looks like these heroes might end up running into each other here at the start. This would be crazy. We might see a 5 on 5 battle. Holy no, smokes. Never seen one of these before. We see an arrow coming across the top, just missing. And there's that three-man cast that we're talking about. We have the Dread getting Nova and stunned. And it looks like the Anti-Mage is going to pick up the first blood, but not before the Spectre picks up one itself. We have a huge cluster F of heroes on top of each other. Man, that's so erotic as we see PG Geek goes down right now. Nice Stalker, very tanky, but it's going to end up going down. So you see it being fo completely focused down by three or four. Now Anti-Mage doing a lot of work, both the Venomancer and the bottom very low. Viga is going to work, going to pick off the Venomancer right now. And also, we have Anti-Mage going against the... Uh, Crystal Maiden, Crystal Maiden is gonna go down, but not before Potom. Another arrow gets whipped, and that was a four. four, four Why four. did Venomancer stay? After watching that the second time, Vino was at like 50 HP and came back to throw down a Venomous Gale. Ah, oh, it's crazy. You know what would have been sick is if like Power Shot was charging up and uh, Anti Mage killed the wind, which the Wind Runner, and then like she an died as well. And caused the Power Shot to proc and then killed himself. I'd have been sick. That would be sick. Like it's five for five trade. Uh, at 10, or like 10 one minute in, no one's like just their hands off mouse. Can't even play. <laughs> Nobody's alive. Yeah, that would be awesome. Oh, man. Oh, man. That battle actually happens. That battle was so long that Dread was actually able to reincarnate and get back top before it ended. That's how uh, That's how ridiculous that battle was. Anyway. All right. So we have an X up top against that Spectre, the Lena, and the Crystal Maid, who is currently warding, will be up there as well. Uh, in middle, we do have Vino and, and Night Stalker middle. So you said Vino and Potom perhaps top. It looks like Vino and Night Stalker are going to be middle up against that Beastmaster. Uh, that will leave uh, Bottom to be a dual lane of just Witch Doctor and Anti Mage, which will be totally fine against Windrunner. Yep. Um, I'm just going to go back to that early engagement that we definitely didn't saw coming was I think Sentinel get a huge, that was a huge win. The anti may survive all the way to the end. He <laughs> walked into lane as level three yeah. uh, and now he's, he, you know, he's three and a half going to go to four. Last, his, those last, I think it was the last kill, maybe even the last two kills he got as solo XP. That last kill was definitely solo XP. Um, so on the other side, Vigos, the Windrunner, was the one who was the big beneficiary for Scourge. But Windrunner being level three and Anti Mage being level three at the start are co two completely different things. Well, actually, uh, the the Windrunner being level three that might actually be pretty good against the Witch Doctor because you know how in the beginning Witch Doctor and, and Windrunner do trade a couple of hits. Witch Doctor says, "Don't come in my ah, lane." Yes, that's and true. And Vigos says, "Dude, I I survived. You didn't yeah, get the hell but, up." But we've already got Mana Burn level two on on uh, Anti Mage, so every attack on Vigos right now just completely is just melting mana. I mean, right now. Um, what is it? Forty, yeah, forty mana at a time. That's 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 legit. Uh, looks like we're we gonna have a cast. There. there we go. Yeah, going against Vigas, and he does get Maledic on him as well. He already picked up a bottle, so that's a very good. Uh, I guess that came up from the first fight, and uh, he's gonna just regen up with the uh, nice. And a regen rune, yeah, yep. indeed. Uh, meanwhile, the the boars, uh, the the boar there, are doing a little bit of harassing the Venomancer. Uh, PGG goes ahead and runs up to the Venomancer, gives him a high five, and turn arounds and run back. Opted not to attack him after doing all the work to get up that close to him. Very interesting choice there. 
PGG, one of the most friendly guys. You know, I always want to give high fives, especially in game as well. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta be. He's he's definitely not racist. Gotta be friendly to all all, all walks of life. Meanwhile, X here getting a solo kill against a dual lane. Uh, I guess Dredge just got arrowed, and that was that. On the top yeah, lane, G, so. G really can't do too much about that. I mean, Spectre early on, Spectre's a powerful hero, but at level 3, he's really not much. <laughs> Meanwhile, mid lane here, <laughs> Ennis takes a Gale to the face. There's a Void, and that is going to be going down. I think I saw PG just trying to get a Deny off. Unfortunately, unable to do so. Nebula, do you, do you know how to turn off the notification if, like, one of my friends join plays a Dota 2? Or um, is that popping no. up? Because I saw Atree playing Dota 2 right now. I do not I do not know how to turn that off. Shout out to Atree for... Uh, Ruining our cast, you dick! All right. Just to be fair, um, if you were on my screen, it'd be even worse because I got like 50 more friends than you. Uh, it, no, I'm just kidding. But to be there, a lot, a lot of Dutch people playing right now. I got Bamboo playing. Uh, Dead Mage is playing. Who else? Who else is going right now? We got, uh, we got a do a do a do. Oh, Shout dude. out to you. Can you see me type? Oh no, I can't. It doesn't work. Okay. No, but I can do this. Hold on, hold on. I got, can you I ping? got a plan. Can you ping? I got a, I got a plan. Hold on, check this out. Oh, get some. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. All right, okay. I have nothing to say to that. I'm just still checking out what I. Uh, sorry, this is like my first cast with Dota 2, like legit one. And uh, I'm just checking out all the stuff I could do, man. This is crazy. <laughs> oh shit. I already have. I already have like 230 hours um, logged in Dota 2 on my Steam. Okay. I'm serious. I have five it games keep, it, on Dota 2. It, keep, it keeps track of how many hours you've played. I've got 230. Bamboo has like 400. MFO just plays nothing but Dota 2 all day. I don't think he actually does anything else. Like, I'm not sure. Anyway, X up top trying to get a little bit of harass on Dread, who is pulling the creep wave, just trying to get himself some XP up as Dread. Uh, pretty close to level 4 here. Meanwhile, G get level 4 as well. Trying is just now getting 5, but uh, obviously with that early kill by X on Lena, he's level 6, so... A full level ahead of G right now. Yeah, but I think after G picks up that ring of health, there's really not too much that Potom could do. Unless he gets a couple of TPs and gets a really nice arrow, um, there's really little you could harass down that uh, that Spectre in between Spursion, Stout Shield, and then Ring of Health regen. Here we go. X might be in trouble as we see Crystal Maiden and Lina comes around. They can't really kill X though, because you can always leap out of the Frostbite. And are we going to see some of that? We saw Nova being dropped. There's an immediate leap after the Frostbite. LSA going to miss here. And are not even being cast, so yep, they're not gonna get a kill on the bottom right now. Did you press the eyeball to remove the uh, the uh, hey Tauntaun's playing Dota now? Did you uh, remove? Did you press the eyeball to remove that uh, the timer up on the yes, top corner? Yes, I did. Ah, oh, good, because I just now did that because I had no idea it was there. So if we had if we were recording from my perspective, everybody would have been like, "Well, crap." Well, the replay is a quarter it. over. Yeah, and uh... yeah, I did. I did a uh, I did a whole daily um, a week or two. Uh, well, not a week or two ago. It was like the last one I did before I left uh, Arizona. I literally didn't have my my overlay up the whole time, and I had no, I didn't even notice it until like the last five minutes. And I'm all talking like I didn't. I was like, oh, this game could go a whole other twenty minutes, and then I was like, oh wait, no, <laughs> you guys all know that. Oh, I feel like such an idiot. Now a huge distinction I want to point out about how the game is going right now is the Sentinel supports they all have boots of speed. Meanwhile, the Scourge supports. Do not, and that's how there's a good indication. That is a huge indication of that Sentinel is just having a, a a big lead in terms of if your supports to gank theirs and they can't gank yours. Hey, there's a yeah. It's very easy for people to look at the the farmers, the carries really on each team and go, oh well, they're ahead because their farmers are higher. And while that is a little bit true, obviously with the heroes like Spectre and whatnot, you want to pay attention to that. But a lot more indicative of how things are going is really the supports early on. Yep. Um, because early early items on supports are a little bit more important in just about every way. I mean, boots, TPs, these things become a big deal in the in the early mid game. It looks like Venomancer is just staying in the mid lane. It seems like he was just the farming one. As we see Night Stalker uh, going to the secret shop to get something going. He does have a haste in his bottle. Picks up a vid booster right off the bat. So that's very interesting. If he's going to go on the top lane here, he will be scouted. Now he's going to hang back mid. Again, he could pop the haste rune and make something happen against PGG. Who is level 5. Still doesn't have that roar right now. And he's really, really low on the mana pool. Uh, Night Stalker is just being very patient. I'm not too sure exactly what he's looking for right now. It is, it is nighttime. He's looking for an opportunity probably to catch that Beastmaster. Now, it is nighttime, but he's not level 6 yet. Typically, by the first night, you want to be level 6 so that you can throw down that ultimate immediately to extend it a little bit. Um, 
but he's not yet managed to get level six. I mean, I don't think it's gonna matter. Once he gets level six, he's gonna throw it down immediately. But oh, maybe go after the uh, or no, just avoid here. Look, goes ahead and throws down the haste rune, chasing after the crystal main. He will get frostbit here, uh, forced back. Nope, he's gonna dive anyway. Venomous gale, another void. There it is, and he gets the kill, self a kill there on NS. So NS, one of the best support players in the world, goes down very quickly to the uh, night stalker. We see the power of night stalker, yep. um, just so strong in Dota two. He becomes, he gets so much HP. Look at him. It's level, it's what, minute seven? He's already at 1100 HP. He's just got that fight boost. Well, now to be fair, he would have get the same amount of HP in Dota 1. He would get the same I amount know. of kills against him. I know, I know, but for some reason, you know how like some certain things just feel different? Right. Like, in Dota 2, for some reason, Nines just feels much more powerful. I, it, it just has to be the limited hero pool. Like, there's just not as, maybe there's just not as many heroes as good against Night Stalker in Dota 2. Maybe that's it. Night Stalker is going to be hasting on the top lane right now. Going to find himself Alina trying to hide in the woods. Oh, not going to just peek Did he around. just pop back to back haste rune? Yep, back to back haste rune on oh the Night Stalker. He's going to find himself a G. Nope, going to opt not to kill a G. Arrow, Arrow does catch the bottom, but, or um, the Spectre, but again. QQQ is just running around with his like a chicken with his head cut off, doing not a whole lot of anything. PGG not even level six yet. I de definitely thought he could have died for it, but hey, there was two or three TP squirrels coming in, so maybe he was right to turn back. But all this meanwhile, Venomancer farming in the mid lane, and I like this. Venomancer is one of those supports, one of those few supports that needs so many levels. You want level 11 on him, uh, at the least. He's not like a Crystal Maiden. He's not like a Lena where you could get away with you know low amount of levels. So I'm glad that he's farming it up right now. Yeah, plus he he does actually need some items. I mean, he doesn't desperately need them, but I mean, boots, Django, um, these things are pretty pretty good on on a on a Venomancer. You really do want some. Yep. I mean, Crystal Maiden can kind of make do with just a boot, uh, boots, magic wand, and maybe an urn. Whereas, um, you know, Venom wants a little bit more than that. So anyway, on bottom, meanwhile, Anti Mage through all of this has just been AFKing it up on bottom in true uh, true Anti Mage fashion. He does have level four mana break. He has not been forced to level up the spell shield. Uh, I heard a certain caster, <clears throat> not going to mention names here, who said that most anti-mages level up the spell shield, and I think you only need to level up the spell shield as much as you, is necessary. Yep. Um, I, I feel like leveling up mana burn in every opportunity that you're able to level up the mana burn is is what you want to do. You don't, you only need to level up the spell shield as it's required. And I, I so. and oh, looks like we have a gank on the mid lane here as we see Nice Stalker just poking his head out, takes out a couple of stun. Both sides have a couple of supports. And a very tanky hero on the mid lane here, and I believe that uh, Caster intelligently did re make that remark during a uh, a trialing anti mage where he was up against a fellow nuking trialing. So I do believe taking spell shield or that that Caster must yes. have thought taking spell shield in that regard was a uh, very smart. And I gotta say I agree with that Caster. He's really smart and probably really handsome as well. As we see, nice stalker <laughs> goes on the win not too much. You were saying, sir? Yeah, I'm just saying. I, I, I feel like. I feel like saying that most situations it's being used was a bit of a, an overstatement. I, I feel like no such thing. I, I just feel like it when it yeah it does happen, but it's not the most common. The most common. Anyway, we have a QQQ diving after Vigos here, which is uh, kind of ironic if you think about it a little bit. <laughs> anyway, a nice cast gonna bounce between VGG and Vigos about a million times. QQQ will get that kill. NS goes for a, fro or a frostbite. Unfortunately, PCT is right behind him. Throws on the minute scale. Crystal Man will die as well. Uh, gonna beat the crap out of that boar as well. Boar dead. Uh, you got plus 28 there for the uh, yellow, whoever yellow is. I believe it's uh, one of them. I don't know. You know what we're missing from this game? Where's our right. quick sound? We're dominating. Triple oh, kill. Oh, right. We don't have any sounds. Does it? I, now, I haven't played Dota 2 enough to realize. If, is it even there? I don't think it's there, right? Yes, it is there. It is there, but it's not in the replay? I guess it's not in the replay. That's a good point. I didn't even notice that we don't have any of that. Um, because I definitely remember, I mean, yeah, I mean, Godlike and Dominating are there when you're playing. Okay. When you're playing, so we just have a sound. must be some kind of sound pack or, or bug issue with the... Uh, with replay, something, but. something not uh, normal. Bug, just keep calling. It's gonna... well, that's what I'm saying. In Dota One, when something weird happens, you're like, "Huh, that was odd." Dota Two, it's like bug. They'll fix it. Hey, uh, I learned something <laughs> new in mechanic. You know, in Dota One, it's like, nope, it's just bug right here. Oh, yeah, Dota Two, it's just a bug. In Dota One, it's like, oh, I learned something. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, uh, QQQ gonna dive after the uh, G here. Unfortunately, there's a TPM by Dread immediately. He's gonna get caught. He does get frostbite. They throw down that. Uh, yep, and down he does go to a Laguna Blade, I believe, right to the face. Yep. Yep. But I just want to point out how long he survived against the barrage of Crystal Maiden, Lina, and the Spectre. He just took a lot of spells, and if yeah. he if he survived a little bit longer, there was nothing left for the Crystal Maiden and the Lina to even bell him. So they barely killed him. Here comes the Potom trying to do something against G. Uh, Crystal Maiden, very, very low amount. There's a Nova being dropped on X right now, but he's quite...
quite all right. I want to take a chance to check a little bit on farm because there's been a lot of action on the top lane here and Spectre still got 60 creep kills. Um, for how close he's keeping up with the anti-mage despite that his lane is completely intruded upon continuously, I, I, I say G is farming really well. Oh yeah, G, G is, I, I'm always amazed with G, like he can be in a seriously hard lane and still manage to get a pretty amazing amount of farm. Um, 78 to 63 when you consider that like G has been the primary focus of this game. Uh, that's pretty impressive. If you actually look at that uh, on the top right, if you click on the three coins, you can actually look at the difference in gold earned as uh, Radiant is up to about 3,400 more gold right now. So Sentinel, um, despite that, Sentinel is still quite far ahead as all of those supports like Witch Doctor got himself those boots. Uh, the Venomancer, of course, giving himself quite a bit of free farm in that middle lane. We have the treads and the bottle on that, uh, on that uh, um, bottom. And, of course... We have the phases as well as a stout shield vitality booster, almost a vanguard to go along with the bottle on NS. So NS getting quite fat as well. So once again, we're going to see phase boot on the nice stalker. Again, uh, th the first time we saw this today, we're like WTF. But um, I guess it makes more sense if you think about that he um, bypassed a lot of creeps while chasing. So you, wanna, you don't want to get blocked. As we see a couple of tele teleport scrolls go on the bottom here. Maybe they're going to go for a gank on this anti-mage. Three men smoked up. They have the roar. They have the LSA. They have the Laguna Blade. You know, Laguna Blade not on cooldown right now. But hopefully they could get the perfect chains and going on. There is a wrong range war. They need... Wow, it looks like Spectre's going to hunt in as well. Every single spell being dropped on the anti-mage. Like... There's a silence. No, there's a Plano, moonlight shadow. Threw down, bottom threw down her, her yep. moonlight shadow. Now, that is actually important. Literally, Lena's ultimate came on cooldown right in the middle of that battle. When you said that, it had four seconds left. Uh, as he went invisible, it popped up. Um, and it and a counter gank, which is one of NS's, you know, Night Stalker's primary things, the ability to TP in and immediately counter gank, uh, does get that PGG, so really super super big deal there um the inability to kill the anti-mage who remember has been afk farming this entire time based upon literally one second of cooldown relative to the time it takes for fade on moonlight shadow um followed by you know ns tping in and getting a kill that's a that's a huge a huge swing yeah i, I just think that if you didn't get the chain sent off against the anti-mage who would have just lived through maybe they were miscalculating it. you were completely right that one second difference kept the anti-mage alive and that might have a huge impact in this game because that's the difference between anti-mage now still farming in the bot lane there getting a kill exp getting the kill exp kill assist go whatever kill go kill exp versus being dead for a minute and losing like 300 gold so yeah just, because he is level 11 he would be dead for for a little bit you know and of course g is just afk farming it up top and that would basically allow g to make up the ground that was lost in the early game because g right now um, it's 94 creep kills on anti-mage, 78 for Spectre. You know, if if Spectre is dead, or I mean, um, if anti-mage is dead for a little bit, he just loses that little bit of XP, that little bit of gold, uh, that buys Spectre a little bit of time to really, um, you know, kind of bridge that gap. Uh, Vanguard has been completed on Spectre, so to fight all of this, you know, 15 minutes in, we got Treads, Vanguard, he's up to um, another 1,500 gold. Uh, wow, this is I, I almost can't. I almost can't believe how well he's farming, despite yeah. averting. Yeah, he's like he's like five to seven minutes away from a relic here, right? Which would be pretty much on pace. Like, are, yeah, that's pretty amazing. And uh, jeez, G, why are you so good? Why he's so good? Anti mage, by the way, does have he's a voice stone away from his uh, battle fury. Battle fury, and yeah. that's that's when the real farm starts up for the anti mage. Like, you might think he's farming good right now, but you haven't seen anything oh. yet. Because yeah. uh, and uh, let's see if he's gonna pick up a crawling blade. Twenty minutes in the game, <laughs> as you saw, ZSMJ hey, did. And I, I actually it's pretty think smart. The ZSMJ, I, I, think, I think it was a good choice, yeah. actually. But to be fair, I buy I buy Quilling Blade at level 1 on anti mage I go Tango's Quilling Blade Stout Shield. Well, when you could actually last hit, you know, you could bypass that. Hey, hey. <laughs> Sometimes, it's not about lasting, it's about having more damage than the person you're laning with so that you can win the lane more, alright? Alright. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta win more. It's important. <laughs> As yeah. we see, a little bit of trade going on in terms of tower. Mid-tower gonna be somewhat delayed. Uh, by the Venomancer, doing a pretty good job. Oh, it looks like Vigas poking his head out right now. Are we going to see a good shackle shot? No, the tower is going to be claimed by Lina. Meanwhile, top lane here, we had Nice Stalker claim that tower. Vanguard phase and a bottle on that Nice Stalker. He is going to get really tanky right now. Already 1,300 in terms of HP. And you got to keep in mind the Scourge, the Nukage, doesn't get that much stronger. He could pick up a Cloak of Defiance, and he could basically shrug off a lot of Scourge to the offense. And if, yeah. yeah, so I'm a little bit worried about the Scourge right now. Yeah, he doesn't even need the whole hood. He can literally just get the cloak. Um, you, you somehow turn two items into one there. But anyway, he, uh, yeah, it's, it, 
it the the night stalker is just so tanky. He's just he got leap HP right now, by the way. Um, one thing I was gonna say is I I think E Home is um, or rather M Five is really happy with that trade. They're trading a middle tier one for a top tier one. Um, the top tier one is like harder to get, so in that sense they're giving away a more difficult tower, whereas the middle tower is a little bit easier to get. But I think Spectre would really rather like ex expedite the gold. Like if they could give, if he could choose to have 5k gold and give Anti Mage 5k gold as well, I think they would take that trade immediately. Oh, definitely. So any any kind of like tower trades that they can get right now, I think they're pretty okay with. Looks like we have still a couple guys hovering on the top lane here. It looks like QQQ might be making some movements on GG is going to turn back right now. And yes, we are going to see that Quelling Blade being purchased on the Anti Mage. So that must like cannot be two, two games coincidentally no, that must that be a build math, yeah. that has that a, build. a mathematical deal yeah, yeah. like and I, and I think uh, yeah I agree I think the speed uh, like the 32 percent the speed at which and for those of you in case you missed that episode or that that replay uh, basically you get 32 percent damage increased upon your attack with the battle fury if you're if you're increasing your increase in farm goes up by 32 percent at the speed at which you're farming if during that time that you bought the quelling blade if you make up that gold while you have it uh, then you do you have a net gain, which I think is the point. I think that is that is definitely correct. As we uh, once you get a battle for your your speed of farming just goes goes so good. So looks like there's a huge engagement on the top lane here. I gotta say, Nice Stalker might have been in a, a little bit out of position as he was surrounded by five, with only the bottom and the uh, witch doctor nearby. Vigas was right after the witch doctor yep. here. Vigas baller here. This is pretty crazy. If he takes an arrow to the face with the malediction, he will die, and indeed he does. So. Crystal Maiden gonna try to make something happen. No, and this have to turn back right now. Potom, not enough mana chase as we see the. Uh... That was like classic old school Vigas. That's... <laughs> Dive like a boss, die like a bitch. And uh, you know. PG and then you have uh, you have a uh, you have on Gosu gamers like oh my god Vigas instant download. Oh my god, <laughs> that's like the bamboo school of play. I got a rune, I got a kill. I died, but I got a rune, I got a kill. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, but going back to the anti mage thing, I gotta say the fact that you can sell your crawling blade now, and it's yes. such a cheap investment. Like it's basically for free, but you, you increase your farm rate by such amount. Yeah, thirty two percent increase in farm rate, and remember, it's not two hundred twenty. You sell back for fifty percent, right? Yes. So you spend two twenty five, you get back one hundred twelve. You're only really investing one hundred thirteen gold. Yeah, I think this is a brilliant choice. Yep. Um, I mean, I, I have the crawling blade to start out with, anyways, but I think if I didn't, I would definitely start buying it. Um, and I think most, it, it, just looking at these games and just doing the math, I think definitely anybody who makes a Battle Fury on Anti Mage needs to be getting a Quelling Blade after that. I think this is a, a brilliant choice. Yep. There's something new every day, and not even a yeah, bug. Exactly. Dota, yeah, not even a bug. <laughs> that should Dota be a new saying when you're playing Dota 2. Not even a bug. Not even a bug. <laughs> the, um, man, that's the thing about Dota. There's just so much to know, there's so many heroes, so many interactions. That's why the learning curve on Dota is so high and so noob unfriendly, really. Yep. That and the fact that every Dota player hates somebody who doesn't know everything about Dota. Anyway, we see a silence and a void going off on G here. G does take an arrow to the face of Venomous Gale. We see a nice cast bounce, actually. Um, no ultimate by Witch Doctor, though. If Witch Doctor had walked up there and ultimate, they'd probably just kill him anyway. But G, it looks like, will end up going down here. Oh, G does finally die. As well as Ines, so two heroes down. Uh, Night Stalker does die, but I think that's okay because they did get two heroes and more importantly, PCT dies as well. But again, I think it's okay because they did kill uh, that uh, Spectre. Yep, and the thing is, all five hero on Scourge was on the top lane. It was a, basically a 4v5 fight. They came out ahead in terms of killing the enemy carry and not losing the carry themselves. And, and Anti-Mage yep. has a has a Manta style now. Like, he is, he has 200 gold away from He's got the Yasha and Stash. And he's holding the Ultimate Orb. He's got that Battle Fury Tread, so he will have a Manta style in about roughly a second. Insane amount of farm. And I just... I mean, as much as I love Muga and I think he's a great anti mage player, the fact that he does not recognize or not does not, what's the word? Acknowledge the battle. Acknowledge the battlefield yeah. build. It, this this build is just that's why it's so I, popular. I, he farms so quickly. Yeah, it is serious. It is seriously a bunch of farm. That's for sure. Um, and you you couple that with the quelling blade, it really just is amazing. I mean, look at him. He just cut down two hundred and fifty gold. That was two hundred fifty gold. He just got. Yep. Oh look, there's another hundred gold. And like the blink speed, your ability to move between the uh, jungle so quickly. And there's another 60 gold. He's gonna go down there. Like it's just, it's just sick. 
Yep, and you gotta keep in mind that constantly he's not just farming in the jungle. Hey, there's a fight going on the top lane here, so let me just push the bot tower and pressure. Yeah. Force TP's yeah. girls. Hey, there's farm in the mid lane. Let me go get that there as well. It just increases your uh, farm rate so much. Now, you might be trying to do this in one of your pub games and you die 30 times. You're like, yo, man, I'm not too sure about this. And the difference between a professional player such as NU, NUZ that's playing this, he, he will look at the minimap. He will determine, hey, this is a good time to go in the lane and push. Yes. He will go in the jungle if it's dangerous. And if you have that map awareness, this build really pays off. Yeah, and at this point, nothing's dangerous, honestly. He's level 16. Zadire is 11, 10, 12, 7, and 8. Like, he is way ahead of them. So even if you say, oh, well, he's being way aggressive now, it's like, well, now he did all of those things in the earlier stages. He was very observant during all of that. Now he can be super aggressive. Yep. Uh, too many people, I think, get the... They see somebody be really aggressive, or they see them make really crazy plays, and they think, oh, I want to do that, without really realizing that they're not making crazy plays at that point. They're so fat that it doesn't matter. So, As we see here on the top lane here, Anti-Mage leading the push. Nice dodge on the Shadow Shot, but here comes Han. Nice Stalker trying to do some work, but he's at half HP. I'm surprised that he's oh, losing no. HP so rapidly. Here comes the Anti-Mage with the Manta style, though. He's just farming creeps in front of people with Illusion. Still trying to do something, but he's actually... Wow! Gonna get picked off here as we see X leaps in in the wrong moment. Venomancer just behind him as well. I think X might end up going down. No, he pops his Moonlight Shadow. Here comes Witch Doctor Cast. Is gonna pop his ultimate? Yes, he is. But it's gonna end up going down as well. PG is still on the chase. Wow, that that fight went a lot better for the Scourge than I expected because we were like, oh. I, I think Ehome got a little ballsy there. They, they don't. They didn't need to do what they did. Like. I know I always talk about how, like, or we always talk about how, you know, you got to be aggressive when you're winning, etc. I, I don't think they needed to be, they, they weren't really in a great position there. They didn't have a spectacular vision of the Scourge. They kind of got, Anti-Mage, while he made a good choice throwing down the Manta style and getting in there, I think he could have blinked in towards a hero before throwing down the Manta. He didn't necessarily need to charge his primary hero in there. He could have charged the two Manta illusions in and been a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more um, cautious with his own hero. Yep, um, but after he, after the end of that team fight, the Scourge still leading by 10k gold, uh, at least according to this chart. Uh, that's wow. actually, a, actually that's a huge number. Uh, it's actually like a, almost 12,000. It's like 11, 11 and a half k. Right, and Team Mage, by the way, have 200 creep kills. I I hope this show neutral creeps, or it will show neutral creeps in the future because I'm sure there's a whole bunch yes, there as well. Does it? Yeah, it includes neutral creeps into your creep kills. Oh, so it just adds the two together, or? Yep, yep, it adds them together. If you look at the the per minute tab, the golden XP, XP per minute, 614 for anti-mage. Next highest, 445 for G, and then 300 or 421 for X. So he has a full 200 XP per minute ahead of anybody else in the game. Gold per minute, 533, 543 now. The next highest, 362, so a full 200 gold per minute as well ahead. His farm is just utterly ridiculous. G has farmed 9,000 gold. Uh, the next highest is 7,900, then 7,000 uh, with Moran and, pa and, and Beastmaster respectively. News is on almost 14,000 gold. He is almost a full 5k ahead of Spectre right now. News is also 1v4ing the enemy team right now, like a boss. He's just going against Dread. He already killed the Crystal Maiden with his Manta style. Now going against Dread, he's gonna just turn back because he's actually in a little bit of trouble as I face a little bit of uh, lag. And he's making a very smart item purchase. Gonna go for Vit Booster and Heart. He realized that after he picks up the Heart, he's not gonna die at all. And yes, uh, yes. that would be the game if he doesn't die, so... Yeah, if he gets a heart, this game is going to be, um, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> I don't really see what they can, what they can possibly do. I mean, uh, the anti-mage, yeah, yeah, Spectre's a more powerful hero than the anti-mage, but he needs, he needs to find a, like a radiance and a heart right now for this to work, and, and I don't think that's going to happen. Um, he is at, um, He's 200 gold from his, uh, radiance, so, I mean, he's still doing all right. And again, this is true testament of how good a farmer G is. Like, his team by no means is winning. They're, they have actually won a couple of fights that turned out to be rather surprising, but G has not fallen behind in terms of farm, despite that his team is down by six kills, the towers are not in their favor, and, uh, but he's still yeah. keeping up, so it's not bad. He's, yeah, he's doing all right. He's, I mean, he's a full 90 creep kills behind Anti-Mage, but, I mean, Anti-Mage, th th that 90 includes all of those jungle heroes, or creeps that he kills, obviously, very quickly. Right. Um, yeah, G is just, I mean, this is really, I think if, if there is one trait about G that I'd be like, well, what what is the thing he's best at? 
fighting through uh, like adversity as far as his farm goes. You know, you see some players. It's like, oh man, they focus me way too much in the early on stages. We see X dying here to the uh, Lena. We do they focus me so much in the early stages that now I'm just way behind. That doesn't happen to G. They focus him way early on the stages, and he still kind of keeps treading water. Yep. So we have that Hood of Defiance being picked up by NS, as you were talking about. So his tank, uh, pretty well solidified. He's at 1300 HP, and of course the Hood of Defiance gives his effective HP much higher than that. Uh, we see a smoke here with the uh, Vino and Witch Doctor as well, so they're going to try and rotate here. As the M5 is going after Roshan, I think they're going to be able to get the Roshan before this, uh, before they get there. So Spectre does pick up an Angus, so a little bit, you know, a little bit of a, a victory there for M5. Nope. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I said no because I don't even know why I said no, but. Here we go. Uh, Radiance burn damage on the Witch Dogger. He's being focused. The cast gets dropped off. Shadow Shot goes on the uh, Nice Dogger, but they're gonna get a kill against. Well, who's actually dying right now? I can't even tell. Anti Mage gets Vigos one kill. Vigos dies. He immediately buys back. Lena will be the next to go, followed by PGG. So three goes down. They do pick up the Venomancer in return, but remember that's a three for one, and Vigos did buy back. So uh, he does assassinate the R. So a three for two now. Uh, Vigos trying to get away. It looks like he will be able to survive, but they're gonna go and get G, I believe. And G does end up losing his Aegis, and News and X are going to camp him, and I think they may kill him a second time. Oh, nope, he's going to actually Spectral Dagger right over the hill there and just run away like a boss. Really well played there from uh, G Manager to survive. Uh, he stays in the battle, though. Maybe this is—he should maybe run away here. Not sure. Looks like, yep, he's going to be totally fine as his tank is quite is quite high there. So uh, there's a 3 for 2 trade. It looks like we're 2 for 2, but that's because Vigos immediately bought back in, which turned out to be an okay thing as he was able to pick up a kill as well as be instrumental in the other one. Now, I think Sentinel definitely won the team fight there. Took down the Aegis, forced a buyback, um, but it was a really good move for the Scourge to recognize that we could take the Aegis right now um, because, again, they are in a losing position. Of course, that was a, a true to, hey, we're playing on Scourge, so we have the Roshan advantage regardless of what's happening. But uh, yes. they recognize that, hey, there's a couple guys not nearby. Well, I think uh, Night Stalker was top at the time. It's like, okay, let's let's go for it. And they got it. So very well done. Yeah, and they're going to have to do stuff like that to win this game. I mean, they've got to, honestly, they got to not just do that, but they got to, they got, they really do have to win a few battles here. I, I don't know how they need to do it. They're, they're you know, it, they got to hope that they stop following uh, the anti mage around, which is just not going to happen. Um, but what they really got to do is hope to pick off some of the other heroes without the anti mage there. Uh, and it really can't be Night Stalker because Night Stalker's a little too tank. They really got to get the um, get the Potom here. I mean, I think if they kill Potom and Venomancer, then maybe they can go after the NS. Um, and you got to hope, of course, the whole time that Anti Mage is nowhere near that. I'm I'm not um, too sure though, because I, I think right now what the Scourge of four other guys uh, aside from G, they're doing a really good job. I see them doing a couple of smoke gangs. They they picked off X, I think, on the bot lane earlier. It's just that I think the time that you spend to pick off X with your four hero, Anti Mage makes it up in farm. Do you think so like that or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, but I think what they have to do is look. They're they're not going to stop anti mage from farming farming anymore. That tr that ship has passed. At this point, anti mage is going to continue farm at will, and there's nothing you can do about it. So the only thing you can really hope you have to get even more kills than you would otherwise get. So when they get a gang, so they go for after gang on X, they need to immediately follow it up, up with more killing while X or is tower dead. push or something like that. Yeah, or, or tower pushes to make up that ground because they're just not going to be able to stop anti mage from farming that. That ship sailed out of port many, many years ago, so that's uh, that's not happening. Yeah, E-Home, true to any Chinese team, true to E-Home, their playstyle is turtling and farming up, and they have all. do you think they have all the time in the world here? Can they just farm for the next 40 minutes and still win, no, or against a I, Spectre? I think if this game goes 40 minutes, they, they'll be a little, <laughs> little bit hard-pressed. I, I, Anti-Mage is quite far ahead of, of, of Spectre right now. I mean, they would need this game to go to the point to where Anti-Mage like, capped on levels, and then Spectre was then making up some amount of ground in that turn in that sense, you know. And on top of that, they would also need Night Stalker to kind of not and Potom to not continue farming. But Potom's got a Diffusal Blade. Looks like he's going to have himself a BKB next. Um, so I don't see that being the case. I, I think if, if this game doesn't go for another thirty minutes, then Sentinel is pretty well set. So um, they don't. They're definitely not in any rush. Uh, but they don't want this game to go too long. There's no reason for that to happen. Again, you get in the situation where you randomly lose a battle and you're dead for 90 seconds and you lose a Rax. Looks like we have Necro books being sent in right now. Keep in mind that there was no hotkeys on Monoburn. I think PGG was raging on that fact. Uh, he's going to send away a couple of blue minions, and uh, that's cool. There was no hotkeys on Mana Burn. What? There's no hotkeys on Chen Creeps at the time. There was no hotkeys on um, the ne Necro book minion, that the, the Mana Burn hotkey. There's no hotkey, so you have to literally click your mouse and click on the spell and click on the enemy hero. Oh wow, really? Yep. So 
Just imagine really? playing imagine playing Night Stalker and you didn't have a hotkey for your void or your fear. I, I play well I played Enchantress and when I when I enchanted Centaurs I had a hotkey there, it was as my first skill. Oh. Maybe maybe if they're using legacy keys it didn't work. Don't know, yeah. Maybe that's what it is. It would make sense because legacy keys I, I would think there would be a, an issue with hotkeys there. Right now legacy keys are the ones that have the biggest problem. If you set the hotkeys individually, then they're there. Yo man. Um so Legacy keys, the way to go. For those of you who like to make everything too much, you know what? You know what's even better? Might as well play one handed. Yep. Like, why even <laughs> use hockey? You can just click on everything. Hey, man, like, pro. Hey, look, it, yeah. It's Do you remember Hit? Cool. I was going to give random shout out to Hit. Yeah, shout out to Hit for playing on a touchpad. He, he's actually pretty decent, and he plays yeah. on a touchpad. That's insane. I had, a, I had a friend back in the day who played Counter Strike with a ball, mo uh, ball mouse. You know, you, like. Not not a ball mouse in the sense that it has a ball on you. I, I meant like one of the this, this gigantic mouse with this like sphere on top of it. Yeah, it's it's a it's just an orb, and you like roll the orb around with your thumb. Oh man, he was super pro with that thing. He could literally flick it and like just like, assassinate people. Whew. So that was that's that's some baller that's some baller baller play right there. All right, meanwhile I'm gonna pull down the item screen and let's see what we got here. Um, four staff on Vigas looks like a talisman. Or excuse me, an ultimate orb. Uh, we have Jeep completing our Variance. Vanguard does. I'll check the goal later in a bit. Uh, Medallion Courage on the Lena. That's pretty much it for the Scourge team. Of course, they have Neko 3 on the Beastmaster. Oh my god! I need to pull away the screen. How do I do it? Oh, okay. All right. I'm good. Where's the battle? All right. E Home X. So Vita Mixer goes down first, followed by Lena. So a one for one trade so far. X is going to be able to get away. G chasing as best he can. Unfortunately for him, News is wailing on his entire team. G is going to go out for QQQ. The Vigos does go down. They make it the Night Stalker, but unfortunately, Anti Mage goes ahead and decides to change his focus over to the Spectre, uh, which is not a good thing for G as he's going to be forced to run away. So it is just a two for one trade here. So far, Lena and Winter under four. Oh, oh man. That arrow had hit, that would have been uh, lights out for Spectre. Now, Spectre is out of mana, so the damage done by Anti Mage is actually mitigated a little bit. That's one of those um, things about Anti Mage that's actually kind of like doesn't News. make any sense. News! Blocking in with Blink Cast is gonna be bounced, man. I have. This is the first time I've seen a Chinese team in general chase so hard. They generally, oh, let's go back and just get the hill tower, let's get hit buildings. But no. Yeah, by the way, with the Battle Fury, he literally just farmed 650, 700 gold. Do you see that? Hey. And even a bug, really, just farming. He got, he got like 10 of those creep kills, and they were worth 40 each. Like 800 gold. Oh, man. Anyway, I was going to say, one, it's one of those weird things where you actually run out of mana against the anti-mage, and it's like, all right, well, at least he's not burning any more damage. Like, yeah, he could ulti me, and I'm dead, but at least he's on <laughs> cooldown, you know? Except, except he still hits for, what, like 100, 200 damage, even without his mana break. They're going to go for the high ground now. Here comes the Beastmaster. Necrobook already popped. Lina and these Crystal Maiden trying to do whatever I can to Anti-Mage. Anti-Mage barely blinks out in time. Very low HP. Might still end up going down. No, that was just illusion. Just kidding. Ooh, a nice arrow actually is aimed for Vigas. Actually gets PGG. News goes ahead and throws down yet another ultimate. Taking down Vigas. Immediately kills PGG as well. PGG goes ahead and rage by. Well, not really rage by. He just needs to defend by. Uh, their middle tower does go down to Witch Doctor actually end up getting that kill. They're going to kill the racks here or they're gonna kill the creeps and, and now they're gonna kill now they're gonna kill the racks okay so news goes ahead and focuses there uh lena making a pretty poor choice of walking anywhere near anti-mage goes ahead and kills her as well gonna follow that up by killing beastmaster yet again so nope actually gonna turn around oh gonna kill there finally the racks go down g goes ahead and dives in here with his radiance it looks like Ray's doing a little bit of burn damage here. It looks like Witchdark throws down his, um, yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> Marana and Witchdark go down. So two heroes dead now for Sentinel. So a little bit of a, a counter kill. But unfortunately, they did lose their racks. So no matter what happens here. Uh, Godlike here by anti -Mages. He takes down PGG. Venomancer does die to the Spectre. So he gets himself a triple kill. So Godlike for anti -Mage and a triple kill for Spectre. So they're, you know, swapping places, unfortunately. Um, for Spectre, anti has decided to rotate and focus on him. Now, his ultimate's ready in 12 seconds, and he's actually just going to kill him with attacks. Or, just kill an S. Wow, nice. Kill an S. Oh, an S, come on, free kill. Two hits. All you really need is two hits. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. One hit? What are you talking about? Two hits. Uh... Hit. And ultimate in one. Ultimate in one. GG. G. Oh, no. He just gets in the tower. He's going to get... He's going to live. He's going to... Oh, he could die. Okay, there you go. As Dread actually throws down his ultimate. Did you see the animation on Dread's ultimate? Nope. There? Me either. Okay. That's so a bug. Sure that that was... No, but not a bug. Not a bug. It was just, it, clearly just some kind of anime. It was a graphical error. <laughs> probably, we probably had similar video card problems. Um, anyway. Yeah, real fast, game is real fast. can you slow down a little bit? I think you were a little bit ahead during that team fight. I could do that, but I don't want to show the progress part because obviously there's going to be 40 more minutes of this game and the G miraculously farm his way back. Um, no, I, I don't think that's going to happen, though. 
Um, no, I think. Oh, actually, look at the progress bar. You're a little bit closer than you think. Oh, okay. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, let's look at the items here for Lena. Lena's got herself a medallion, a uh, bracer, and the treads. All right, that was fun. There's a uh, there's about fifteen thousand gold in terms of difference. I uh, just want to point that out. There is wow, it's actually closer to twenty thousand. We're about nineteen thousand gold difference right now. Um, let's let's just let's put that in perspective. Nineteen thousand gold is essentially a butterfly, a BOTs, a heart, and it's like another hero with items. Yeah, <laughs> butterfly heart. That's it's well, it's, yeah, yeah. It's about butterfly heart, Vanguard BOTs. Oh, that's a nice amount of gold. Venomancer gonna get roared, gonna get picked off. Let's see if he's gonna drop his ult before he dies. No, he does not do that. The Sentinel still cho choose to fight this. I'm not too sure if that's the best choice as we see Spectral Han being casted. Anti Mage chasing supports gets a kill on the Crystal Maiden right now. But actually, Nice Stalker in huge amount of trouble. They're trying to focus on PGG. PGG gonna be the second one to go down here. Anti Mage focusing fire on the Vigos now. Vigos. One blink away from death. There you go. Gonna get a kill on him as well. And now he's just going on GG is actually gonna be in huge trouble because anti-mage doesn't even care about his little radiance burn damage. There's a purge I believe. Was that a purge? No, he was just somehow yes. slowed down and he's gonna go down as well. A team wipe. It was a, pur it was a purge from X. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm still trying to learn all the item icons and all the stuff going on, but yeah. Game pretty much over at this point. Actually, Scourge still have gold Sick to buy back. blink, bro. Well played from the anti-mage here. If he has still had that coiling blade, he could cut his way through. Instead, he's going to go give a little bit of hugs to Roshan. Let's see how quickly Roshan dies to Anti-Mage. Oh, not very fast. Nope. Roshan pretty, uh, pretty beast at this point of the game. And actually, if Scourge could... do, If they identify there's a Roshan engagement going on, Spectre could come in. I mean, right now, Anti-Mage is all by him, by by himself. Like, they, they could lose the Aegis. Uh, oh, and actually, Anti-Mage identifies that that is the problem. He's going to go ahead and back off here. Um, but Roshan, a half if I were Scourge, yeah. you know what I might do? I might as well just say screw it and go after Roshan. Like, the, they're not winning this game otherwise. They gotta, they gotta have some big plays. Might as well go. I mean, go. You go bigger. You have a home because yep. uh, you're not gonna win just at, at the current rate. And I believe in the stage of this tournament, um, I believe both teams is sitting at like two two or something right now. Whoever wins this game advance. Yes, so this this game is super important. It's not like they can just uh, like afford to sit on their rest on their laurels and kind of just hope to play better and get kind of a better feel for E-Home. Um, now, at this point, I don't think either team actually knew what the ruling would be um, because what ultimately would is is going to end up occurring later on from the timeline here as we actually see a little bit of anti-mage going after the Rosh in here is the admins hadn't actually had a rule set in place if there was a tie, so... They just made a ruling. They decided, well, they played each other, so this team won. As we see, NS, uh, actually, I think Spectre picked up the Aegis. He ended up going down, gonna respawn, so I, at the very least, did deny the Aegis right now. Crystal made him very, very low. Might end up going down to those Spectral Wards. Yes, he does. Uh, not Spectral Wards, the uh, Venom Wards. I think he just died to the poison overall. So, losing your Crystal Maiden, but denying an Aegis in the process, not a bad trade at all. Uh, Crystal Maiden. Okay, solo cast for about a second. We back. All right, okay. Oh, well, there's nothing happening, so... Good good move uh, by Nebula leaving. I'm going to do a quick check on in terms of form. 400 creep kills on the Anti-Mage. Clearly doubling it up compared to G right now. In terms of score, we have 15, 2, and 8 compared to 8, 4, and 12. So again, despite that G's team is losing so badly, I'm actually commending him for keeping up so much. But Anti-Mage right now is just a little bit too much to handle. Let's see how much what items he's got right now. He's got a Man style Heart, Butterfly, and a Battle Fury. Do I need to say more? Because right now, this anti-mage should basically 1v5, uh, unless he, I mean, he really can. He, re he really, really can. Um, Spectres, what is the second item here? He's got a Reaver, gonna go for Heart. I don't think Heart is the answer here. I feel like anti-mage solo could clean off the entire team. And yes, G will be the sole survivor of any team fight. but as we saw from the last couple of team fight, anti-mage just keep chasing and kill him anyway, so... Um, I don't think extra survivability on the Spectre is the answer. I think extra damage is the answer, to be honest. But, um, well, G knows better, and let's see if it's going to pay off. As we see, Anti-Mage still farming it up. The entire Sentinel team farming it up as well. Let's see what the Night Stalker has. He has Plate Mail, Pipe, Vanguard, Phase. So going for a very, very heavy amount of tank. X doing a little bit more DPS power as he has a um, Black King Bar 
and a defusal blade. Of course, blocking bar mostly against the four stunning supports of the Scourge. Uh, BKB still will pierce through it, but it will. You could shrug off Crystal Maiden. You could shrug off Vigas. You could shrug off the Lina. Of course, it's really good against the Radiance Burn damage. It's really good against Dispersion's Pure damage because uh, Magical Immunity does block uh, Pure damage as well. So, yeah, it's actually more of like a Black King hat. If you actually look at it, it looks like, like imagine real fast that that's just like a, you just wear that as a hat. You got like little handlebars, horns kind of going on there. So uh, like it looks like right. a really big, big beak, right? That little thing. Yeah, it, it kind of looks like the top of like a motorcycle, you know, like when you're driving that. PGG gets air right now. Blink in from NUZ. Pops Amanda. There's an instant kill against Beastmaster. And that means a lot. That's your four second stun against the uh, anti-mage. That is your attack speed aura. And there goes the bot Rex right now. So, so Ehome just kind of rolling over this one. There's not even much of a fight here anymore. Yeah, I think actually what meant a lot more than losing that stun was the 25,000 gold difference. I think that's probably what actually had a little bit more to do with it. That is a sick amount of gold. That is utterly redonkulous. Now, I think this game's over, so I'm not going to talk too much about the game anymore. I just want to I want to say, you know, when you guys in the future are playing your own copy of Dota 2 and watching a replay, it might be very tempting to just pull down the gold menu and like, oh, there's 25,000 gold in difference and be like, oh yeah, Sentinel's winning by a lot. But I think it's more important to focus on how the team got here in the first place because... I feel like a lot of it, a lot of it will be forgotten at the end. It's like, oh yeah, Ehome was up by twenty five thousand gold. Yes, that's true. But I mean, well, it's important to know how that how that was earned. I mean, right. It is relevant. It's it's a it's a good metric for knowing just how much a team lost by, um, or or understanding the current slice in time. Going back to that day nine analogy of what's going on currently, like that, it's a pretty good indicator of how the game is is ultimately going. Um, but in order to get better as a player, you need to know how that occurred and what happened. Obviously, definitely. And, uh, I mean, all, right, all so these menus, like, uh, you know, gold per minute, EXP per minute, it's really cool, but ultimately, it's not the most important thing in the game to me. Well, it, it is, it is, yeah, it is really cool. It's good for being able to check farms and gold per minute and stuff like that. Uh, that's definitely what's best for it, I feel. Yep. So, that's the uh, GG called by PGG, and uh, E-Home ends up taking this game. Now, the ultimate ruling that would uh, result from this is that uh, be they tied in the group, but because E-Home had beaten... Um, M5, they did go ahead and advance, and I think everybody's pretty okay with that decision. I right. mean, it wasn't like there was some kind of crazy one, you know, three teams all beat each other once. This was I mean, I pretty straight. I think that scary. would be a little bit more. Oh, oh, wow, that was a huge, nice graphical bug there. Not a bug, just co coincidentally, both of our video cards just, you know. Oh yeah, I actually, well, actually, I think I have a. My video card is 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 the Pentagon actually, and as you can see, there's a bit of a Pentagon in the middle of the screen. It's just kind of stamping its approval on the game. It's like, yes, Dota 2, it's completely finished. There's a Pentagon. Okay, uh, I don't have much more to say. Again, this Saturday or this Sunday, excuse me, we'll be casting for the Casio Cup, and uh, be sure to show up if you can. It's 14 CET. We'll be casting some of the best European teams out there, and uh, of course, it's going to be Nebula and my, me casting live. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this game. And until oh, let me know if you guys actually enjoy watching Dota 2. I know there's some graphical issues, and I was just having fun playing with those menu, and I <laughs> missing a team fight. I was like, oh look at this that gold <laughs> thing, and then like, there's a team fight. I'm like, oh my god, where is it? <laughs> so let us know, give us feedback on that, and uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is Nebula and Luminous signing off. See you guys.